Stephen Mosley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May, may I be the first to congratulate the member, my honourable friend, the member Frenfield North, on his entertaining, interesting speech. And can I also thank everybody else who has made maiden speeches today? I've learnt a lot, and I hope that you will learn a bit from me as well. Over the few weeks that I've been here, I've been absolutely amazed at almost every member that I've talked to on hearing that I represent the city of Chester has delighted in telling me of their happy trips to my city. Whether they have been to the Chester races, studied, studied at the Law College, or been for a romantic weekend away, they have all, without exception, left with a wonderful memory of their visit. I am proud to say that Chester has always welcomed visitors. Our first recorded visitors were the Romans, who established a legionary fortress on the lower reaches of the River Dee, built the city walls, laid out the road network, and enjoyed themselves at the amphitheatre so much that they stayed for almost 400 years. In 973 AD, King Edgar came to Chester and established himself as the king of all of England when he got the kings of the other northern kingdoms to, to row him up the river and start to lay the foundations of what is now the United Kingdom and marks the start of a long relationship that Chester has enjoyed between the Crown and the city that has lasted over a thousand years. The Normans came to our city, built a castle and built a magnificent cathedral and then they then used the city as a base for their conquest of North Wales. The English didn't get it all their own way and several times the Welsh raided the city destroyed the bridges across the river and burned down many buildings outside the walls. It is from this period that our famous statute came into force, which was apparently never repealed, that forbids Welshmen from entering the city walls after dark and allows those that are in the city at night to be legally shot with a crossbow. <laughs> Fortunately, we live, we live in happier times, and except for the one day of the year that Chester play Wrexham at football, we live in, in friendship with our Welsh neighbours. Speaking of football, I must congratulate my predecessor, Christine Russell. When Chester City Football Club went into administration earlier this year, she was at the forefront of the campaign to bring football back to Chester. I'm proud to say that at the start of this month, the supporters' own City Fans United have established a new, new Chester Football Club and we can now look forward to football returning to the Diva Stadium in the autumn and I know a lot of that is due to the hard work put in behind the scenes by the previous member for the City of Chester. She also championed international development and improved childcare, but she will be most remembered in Chester for her conscientious casework in the city and the help that she gave to so many local people. I have known Christine for over 10 years, and whilst we had many disagreements over politics, I salute the good work she did locally, and I know that it is not going to be easy to follow in her footsteps. I have also been delighted by the goodwill that exists on both sides of the chamber towards her predecessors, Giles Brandreth, and to his pre predecessor, Sir Peter Morrison, and I hope to be a worthy successor to them all. Chester is the jewel in the crown of the northwest of England. However, there is still much that we need to do. Our Gateway Theatre closed down in 2007, and we now need to deliver help to ensure that our dream of a new theatre and performing arts centre in the city is delivered. I was particularly pleased to hear the promise by the new Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport that he had promi already promised that lottery funding will be restored to the arts, providing many opportunities for towns and cities like Chester to improve their arts facilities. We are also lucky to have in the city of Chester, Chester Zoo, which is one of the leading visitor attractions in the country and also a world leader in animal conservation. They have big plans to expand to help conserve more endangered species and I look forward to championing them and their good work within Parliament. Our ancient city walls, our amphitheatre, the medieval rows, they have all been neglected in the past and they now need us to protect and champion our heritage, which is why I will be supporting a bid put in by the local Conservative Council to obtain world heritage site status to the city centre. In Chester, we have huge ambitions to bring investment into the city and I will be playing my part from Parliament to help them achieve their dreams. 
Chester is also a garrison town. We are the spiritual home to the 1st Battalion of the Mercian Regiment, the yeah, Cheshires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm proud to have a former commanding officer before me, and I... <laughs> and we are also the current home to the 1st Battalion of the Royal Welsh Regiment. And all of us in Chester are proud to welcome them back from their recent tour in Afghanistan and looking forward to their homecoming parade in front of Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh in a fortnight's time. Chester has thrived as a tourist destination and as a shopping centre. You can stand at the cross in the, in the centre of the city and see visitors from, from almost every corner of the earth. And I urge all members of this house to come to Chester and to see for yourselves why they and I love the city so much. Chester is an ancient city, but it is also a modern city. Financial giants like the Bank of America, Lloyds Banking Group, Eminus Money have major bases and employ over 10,000 people in the city of Chester. It is quite rightly a priority of the coalition government to curb the excesses of the past few years and to re-regulate the banks, but I would implore the government to remember that financial services create huge wealth for our country, for many places like Chester, and that not all people who work in financial services are the greedy bankers of law. We need to make sure that good financial institutions are able to expand and prosper and that new companies and new products are able to enter the marketplace and by do doing so improve the service and reduce the cost of financial services that are offered to their customers. We need stronger and better regulation, but we also need to make sure it is simpler. Mr Speaker, Within the City of Chester constituency, we are also proud to host Urenco's uranium enrichment plant at Capenhurst. We are all aware of the problems to our energy supply that we face over the next few years. Many of our older coal-fired power stations and nuclear power stations are due for closure. Since 2004, Britain has gone from being a net exporter to a net importer of natural gas, making us dependent on foreign sources and raising concerns over the security of our energy supply. We also, of course, have a huge duty to ensure that we reduce the nation's carbon footprint and we want to ensure that all members of our society have access to affordable energy and to see a reduction in fuel poverty. The 2006 Energy Review estimated that up to 25 gigawatts of new generating capacity would be needed over the next two decades to fill the gap and that is 25 gigawatts out of, out of a current 76 uh, gigawatts of, of current generating capacity, which is a huge gap by any estimate. The UK is quite rightly committed to a renewable energy target of 15% by 2020, and renewables have an important role to play in the sustainability and the security of Britain's future energy supply. But currently, as the Secretary of State told us earlier, Britain only generates 6.6% of its energy requirements from, from renewable sources. The 15% target by 2020 is extremely challenging and will require a massive step change in the development of re renewable resources if it is to be achieved. But even if we do achieve that target, we will still have a gap of more than 10 gigawatts of generating capacity to fill. As a Member of Parliament with a key part of the UK's nuclear infrastructure located within his constituency, I ask the Secretary of State and the Minister to look favourably on the use of new nuclear power generation to help fill this gap. Nuclear power is clean. It is a low carbon source of electricity generation. We have secure long term supplies of fuel. Modern reactors are incredibly safe and it is a future technology where Britain can still lead the world. Operators and owners of nuclear power stations have been jumping at the opportunities offered by the previous government's draft nuclear policy statement and there are now 10 sites judged as potentially suitable on or near to existing stations. These sites have obviously got to be subject to the normal planning process for major products, projects but the government does need to bring forward a national planning statement for ratification by Parliament as soon as possible. Mr Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to make my maiden speech during such an important debate for our country and for Chester.